Hello everyone, my name is PixelRiffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. How are you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day. It's Friday and we're going to round up the week by doing a little bit of city planning on our ongoing kind of industrial fantasy medieval project thing. I really, I'm still not entirely sure what genre this whole project falls into. Some folks in the comments have said it's a kind of industrial thing and it kind of is, but more of a fantasy spin on industrial, verging on like a little bit of steampunk. I don't know, I'm not certain quite how it's all going to come together yet, but I've done a little bit more work over here, mainly just placing some of the uh, cyan terracotta around the walls of this ravine, and so I decided after how hyper detailed this stuff got to keep the back half of the ravine a little bit simple so I could try out you know, which which style I liked better and maybe just do a little bit of remedial work after the fact. The problem with that, of course, is that by placing all of this cyan terracotta, I have now completely run out of terracotta and I need to go back to the Mesa and get some more. But instead, I'm going to put the ravine project on hold. It's clearly like a long term thing that we're going to have to do a lot more work to in the near future. But I don't want to do that today. Instead, I want to make good on my promise to do a little bit more of a, a video about city planning and how exactly we can turn this giant plains biome into a functional city, starting, of course, with the basics and that is roads. I really like this pathway style. I think we will probably go with something like this in the long run, which is good because it makes it nice and easy for me to install new pathways. All we have to do is walk around right clicking with a shovel and we get free pathways pretty much anywhere we go. And that is thanks to the wonderful pathway blocks, which you just get by right clicking with a shovel like so. And it makes all of this planning out a little bit simpler on these grassier biomes. Now to help me out with this, I actually have my camera account logged in. And some folks have been asking me exactly how the time lapses and stuff in this series are done, especially seeing as we don't have access in this version of Minecraft to any kind of mod interface. Or there are some mod interfaces available, but the main one, Minecraft Forge, is not available right now and neither are any of the tools that allow you to kind of record and play back your gameplay like the replay mod. In this case, I'm using a second account logged in with my world open to LAN. That's open to the local area network, so I can log in with a second Minecraft account from the same computer, actually, and it's actually recording over here on this screen. So from a bird's eye view, we can see where I am. I'm that tiny little blue dot with the diamond helmet down there, and you can see the path I've just built as well. And a lot of the time, I will use my second account to log in and just kind of take a look at stuff from a different angle, and it allows you to get a a kind of wider perspective on things without having to just step back or like take a rocket and fly away every couple of seconds or end a pearl away from your build and then look back at it, which can be quite convenient when you're working on larger projects like this. And this is definitely one case where I would love to use that. So we're actually going to switch back and forth to the eye in the sky as we continue with this project. And I'll be able to show you guys a bird's eye view of how our city is developing and where I think certain things should go. So it's going to be a bit of a different episode. We're going to get a different perspective on things today, but I hope you guys will enjoy it. Now, obviously, we don't have a huge amount of structures in place right now, but we do have a few features like the central ravine, which from the eye in the sky view actually looks kind of misty at the bottom, which is going to be my intention. But we're going to do that effect with kind of a stained glass layer and instead of having just render distance take care of it because the, the the mist there is actually just because I have my render distance on the camera account set a little bit lower. And as for around the wall here, I think we're probably going to have a path that goes around here as well. And so it's going to be possible to walk up against the wall here and obviously we'll have to take care of these occasional little things like these dark oak logs not going any further down than the surface. We'll be able to walk around by the back of the wall here and there's probably going to be either some sort of central plaza or another building here. Some people in the comments have suggested that having a bunch of houses really close together, if it's an industrial build, will make a lot of sense. A lot of this stuff tends to be kind of crowded in industrial builds and I like the sound of that. I like the idea of just packing in builds and making the city streets feel very busy. So I think that's what we're going to do. And obviously this has the impression of of a kind of dirt track, dirt path kind of thing, which is why I'm thinking maybe we don't stray too far from the, the medieval or steampunk theme. We tend to, we're, we're probably going to keep this fairly firmly fixed in the realm of fantasy here. Now, obviously I'm going to have to work around stuff like the bed, but yeah, this is all working out pretty well so far. I do need to throw down a few buckets of water and get rid of some of this grass, much as I hate to do it because the grass is actually a really nice thing to have. Aesthetically speaking, in these plains biomes, you can't right click the grass blocks with a shovel if they've got 
you know, the grass entities growing on them. So we do kind of need to get rid of some of that if we want to work with the, the path here. We're going to connect this one over here with the path that we've got in front of the house. And I can already see from my bird's eye view that this is kind of making sort of a, a parallelogram almost, like a, a, a box with those kind of skewed diagonal sides a little bit. So maybe we're going to end up making some houses that suit that pattern a little bit more easily. One of the things that's always going to impress people when it comes to Minecraft builds is having a build that isn't just a box with straight walls. You know what I mean? Like angled walls and stuff like this are actually relatively straightforward to do once you know a few things about building. And so we're going to work with a little bit more stuff like that. And we're going to keep these paths going out in kind of diagonals to guide us towards making a house with angled walls. There we go, that's all connected up, and this is still kind of an awkward space in which to build a house, but then take into account that this entire place doesn't have to be taken up by the building. We need to leave a couple of blocks around each side for, you know, dressing it up with leaves and flowers, that kind of thing. It could even have a garden out the back or something like that to make things, obviously, you know, in a city you might not necessarily have a garden open in the middle of this space, but we can play around with stuff like that a little bit. There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to this stuff. And yeah, we can we can make a house that fits this space quite nicely. Now, obviously, you know, there are certain schools of thought when it comes to building. A lot of the time people will want to build their structures first before they think about how these things are connected up, because otherwise you feel like you're boxing yourself in a little bit and you can't really fully create the build that you want to. In this case, though, I think of it as kind of a challenge. It's it's a, a restriction that we can add to ourselves to kind of challenge what exactly we can do with this space. And of course, there's nothing to stop us pushing these roads out further a little bit. Obviously, we have to do a little bit of terraforming before that can happen. And on these sides, we have some very definite boundaries, but say the house feels like it needs a couple of extra blocks space in this direction, we can always just move the path later. There's nothing to stop us doing that. We can edit this anytime we like. So we're going to move on here, and I think it's probably going to make sense to continue this wall around here, but have some way of getting up onto the next kind of tier of this city. So I think up this way, we're going to actually have an organized staircase. Let's grab some stone brick from the chests over here and make a start on that. Now, normally I would be tempted to build a staircase that just went from here straight up onto this and kind of followed the angle of this path. But I've been looking into other sort of staircase designs and looking at some stuff in my local neighborhood as well. And there's a promenade down at the Brighton Beach, which actually kind of has a, a lot of angled staircases. The staircases will actually kind of force you to walk around here and walk up that way instead of, you know, having a path directly up. And it saves a little bit of space in terms of your town plan because you don't have to just make a straight staircase here. It can be a little bit more flush with the wall. So what I'm going to do is build up this wall here as though it's one of these wall sections on this side. And we're going to put the stairs in behind that wall here going up onto the little plateau kind of bit up here. We're just going to throw down some stone brick stairs for now. We'll probably change up the materials a little bit later, but I think that's going to be a solid start and we'll make the staircase a little bit wide because a lot of the paths I'm working with here seem to be kind of three blocks wide so I think having a three block wide staircase makes sense here as well. Once again we can adjust that later if we need to. I'm going to replace the dirt here with grass just because it makes it nice and easy to get this place shoveled back into shape with the grass path. There we go. This also naturally leaves us a little bit of space here that we could do maybe a corner fountain or something with. In fact I might kind of narrow the path a little bit in that area maybe widen it a couple of blocks to this side just so we can fit something like that in with this corner and it feels like a nice corner to do something like that it's not going to be exceptionally symmetrical because the wall isn't but we could always once again modify that a little bit if we want to and behind here we have a nice little staircase now that will take us up to the next steps in the city but i don't just want the path to go this way i want the path to go out in this direction as well and once again we're going to have to clear out a bunch of grass <laughs> because this plains biome is absolutely full of the stuff but if we keep the path going over here once again kind of following the line of the landscape that we have here following this little low section of grass we can bring the path back around here and this is probably going to be an area where we'll fill in these ponds and build a few more buildings just along this row here. In fact, this might be another place where we could make kind of a terrace of houses all centered on this location. Of course, if this ravine here is going to be the center of the town itself, then it sort of makes sense that that's where a lot of people are going to want to go and they'll have houses relatively close by. And this road here actually leads squarely onto this other odd geological feature, which I'll, I'll switch the 
bird's eye camera account so you can see this. This is actually a really neat kind of geological formation. I mean, it's just a series of gullies in the terrain. It's just where the uh, <laughs> the kind of ravines and caves and stuff, that, that sort of generation has reached the surface there. And I think that's going to be a fantastic place to start a mine for this town, as though the people who've been excavating this ravine have needed to go and mine for resources and have found this natural cave system that they can go down there, take a bunch of iron from to make all of the tools of their, their particular industry. I think that's going to be a pretty solid go. And there's another... Um, another entrance to that that we can link up to in this direction as well and this is going to follow along with the the kind of grass path design it's not going to have like a formal staircase like it does over there because this is more of a workman's route kind of leading to that area whereas i think that staircase while it leads to the ravine is also going to lead to the kind of upper part of town and if we have this path going relatively straight over here it actually links up with this section very nicely i think i might bring it over by a couple of blocks in this direction just to give the path a little bit more of a dynamic feel to it so it doesn't feel like it's just a straight road but this cave system is going to wind up with a couple of entrances to it Maybe one of the entrances can be a little bit more automated than the other. Perhaps we can have minecarts and stuff coming up to one of them and all of the workmen would leave through the other entrance so the resources get dropped off somewhere else. In the fiction of this world, there's a lot of different possibilities, so we could kind of take that wherever you want to take it, really. Let's continue the path over along this section of the plains and we're actually coming back up along here to the place where I think we're going to have the higher city. So maybe we will stop this off around here and once again, follow this natural line of terrain around here so that we can create another section of wall here. And then the rest of this terrain here can actually get sunk down a few blocks, which is going to generate an awful lot of grass for us. But that's fine. I could use grass all the time. So with that wall kind of guiding us towards another staircase into the city, we're probably going to take this path over a little bit just to make sure it's not a completely straight path once again and we'll bring it up around here i think i'm running out of materials if uh, to build the wall in my inventory and i don't want to lose momentum on where we're at over here so i'm probably going to leave the wall and come back to that for the moment but at least we've got an idea of where the entrance to the next section of that is going to be and we can adjust the path as necessary. If we switch back over to our eye in the sky, you'll notice that we've also now got a couple of similarly sized plots for our houses. So that could just as easily be a design that we kind of copy over from one to the other, maybe modify it ever so slightly, or we can go crazy and adjust a bunch of different designs to fit whatever space we have over there. So I think that's probably going to be a good start for this little area. I do want to continue this path up towards these mountains as well, because it feels like some place that we would need a path up up to eventually. I think it's going to be fun to build a little bit of stuff up in the mountains, maybe a couple of cabins, maybe even some kind of, I don't know, monastery or something like that. I'm not entirely certain what I want to build up there yet. I haven't really thought that far ahead, but there will be options for the future. And I think laying in a path over here is going to naturally lead us to want to build something that the path goes to. That's another fun thing about doing these little infrastructure touches like this and building roads is that especially on multiplayer servers, if you build a road, then people just start building stuff alongside it because they're interested in the road having landmarks along the way, places that it goes. A road can actually inspire you to build some more stuff along it just because you want landmarks to be there on the road. And I think that's kind of a fun thing to have laid in here for the future. I can already imagine stuff popping up around this just because we've laid the foundations for what's going to be the, the middle kind of two blocks of our city here. What I have in mind is actually to make the back half of the ravine and this area over here near where the kind of mountains and the tiger and stuff are to actually turn most of this area into a kind of giant castle, which is going to have some various buildings within its walls as well as a central keep. But I think it's going to be fun to have a castle built around the ravine almost in, in a sense, almost like it's kind of protecting the ravine with its with, with the two different we're going to have two different like wings of the castle kind of spread out around it. And so the people in the castle are going to be monitoring the workers who are actually actively working in the ravine and kind of dredging up whatever energy or materials that happen to be piped up from the depths there. So these areas here, we're probably going to leave for, you know, the occasional dwelling and maybe like a workyard kind of thing. But I expect there would be a path kind of along the edge of the cliff here. And I've actually been using some of the path blocks already just to kind of make this look like it's an area that people walk a lot. It's kind of muddied down somewhat. And one of the cool things about this, going back to our bird's eye view again here, is just how obvious it becomes that where 
there are larger roads I want to build, kind of city buildings and that kind of stuff. And where there are just these kind of broken up paths, that's clearly more for pedestrian access and people just kind of walking back and forth rather than like major roadways that people have to get around the city. That's going to be a great reminder to me later on when I inevitably absolutely forget what it was I planned to build in a specific area. The roads that we built around here kind of inform what we want to build in future. Speaking of future builds, one of the things I mentioned wanting to do is a kind of old town section out here in the swamp and I think this path is going to be perfect to travel from here towards that and kind of curve around towards the section in the swamp where it's actually going to be taken over by kind of boardwalks and stuff like pontoons that are going to be floating on the surface of the water and that'll be kind of a, a boarded off area. Obviously we're going to leave this area here a nice wide berth so that when we end up working on the interior of that house and building the rest of it we're going to have plenty of room to do that but I think for now this path going out in this direction seems like a good start to you know make, making sure we have access to this area for later. The houses in this old town section are going to be a little bit dingier, a little bit smaller and as a result, I'm making the paths and the spaces between the paths a little bit smaller as well. We're just going down to a, a kind of two wide path here and leaving maybe a, you know, 10 to 12 block gap in between the two paths. And that's going to make for a nice kind of compact house design later on. And the whole area is going to feel a little bit more kind of cramped together with little dwellings and, you know, shacks and stuff like that if we fill out this swamp kind of waterside area with stuff like that. Maybe even people who make a living fishing kind of in the swamp or kind of getting, you know, boat transport, taking people back and forth, that kind of thing. Wow, there's a lot of lava down here somewhere. <laughs> Can you hear that? It is merrily bubbling away down here. My goodness me. All right, <laughs> I think we need to nip this in the bud now. Be a nice, easy source of obsidian for us. Looks like there's quite a lot of it down here as well. Yeah, oh, hello. <laughs> An entire cave full of lava. Well, yeah, hopefully we should be able to get rid of that. This is what I'm talking about, by the way, when it comes to turning fire spread off. I know I mentioned that in the previous episode, and oh boy, would we need it there, because as soon as we started building anything wooden on the surface, the lava would set fire to it, and there would it would be incredibly, like, it would it, it'd be inconvenient for a start, but it wouldn't immediately be obvious why. I'm surprised this tree here hasn't set on fire with the amount of lava that was underneath there. Of course, even turning fire spread off isn't going to stop players from being set on fire, so <laughs> I think it's probably best that we get rid of that lava while we can. So around here, we're going to kind of have the path follow the waterfront around here, and it's going to widen back out a little bit as it gets a little bit closer to the center of town and where all of the, the industry and stuff happens. But switching back to the camera account in the sky once again, you can see that over there in that top right-hand corner where the old town section is going to be, the paths are just going to get narrower and narrower, and the space to build is going to get a little bit smaller. And I think that's a good thing. I think that will lend itself to some nice kind of cozy builds and, and, and little rundown shacks and stuff like that. Here's another place where the path is going to divert a little bit. We will have another path leading up into the swamp around here. And I think the witch hut is even like a few, uh, maybe a hundred blocks or so that way. But this also leads straight to this cave and maybe we could end up using the cave for something. It's actually got, yeah, there's a bit of water and stuff falling down into there. Maybe we could end up using this as a, a tertiary entrance to the cave or maybe it can just lead here and we can cover the cave entrance over and continue the path on into the swamp but I think for now at least that's as far as I want this path to go and the same goes for this one actually because we are right up on our little earthworks here and I don't want this to necessarily be all the roads leading to this place but maybe this road would lead up to here and then there could be some sort of I don't know maybe a storehouse or something like that seems like a good place to have the entrance to a small building where people can maybe store their equipment or any of the resources that they've picked up can be put there overnight or something like that somewhere it's a uh, a good place to store things and yeah having a path leading up to that kind of makes sense to me I've been spending a lot of time in the top half of this bird's eye view we have here so now I think it is time to work on the bottom half, starting with the path that's going to lead around from this house. And as we mentioned before, it's going to be fun to have a path that leads around the side of this wall here. So I think we might divert this path off in this direction and kind of have it go go past here, maybe with some sort of fence up to make sure that the, the townspeople, these fictional townspeople, don't end up wandering into the magma stuff where it can be a little bit more dangerous. Or maybe this has happened recently enough that they haven't had a chance to put a barrier up yet, or maybe people just have the common sense not to walk on magma blocks, which I know I don't, but <laughs> some people might, I guess. But yeah, we can bring this around here and we can kind of have it 
move alongside the wall again, maybe turn some of these raised sections of grass into little gardens or something like that. We could put some flower beds and stuff up here if this feels like a bit more of a, a kind of public park for people to walk through, especially because it ends up with this little section over here, which I really like. And I do want to turn into some sort of little public rest area where people can hang out. There's a nice lake here and a tree and it just feels a little bit more peaceful and secluded around the corner from this wall here. So naturally we want a path leading up to that once I've cleared all of the grass away with a bucket of water and yeah the path is going to end up around here and then we can start to convert this area into something else. We'll connect the path up on this side and I think that's going to wrap up just nicely there. I'm probably going to come back through and detail these paths a little bit more as well but obviously it's kind of nice to have the infrastructure in place likewise over here i think this path is going to be best if it curves away from this building again because like i said we don't know quite what form that building is going to take right this second but it'd be nice to have this path connect up to the path over here as well and it creates this little wedge shaped area of space which we might be able to put something fun in maybe another small house or something like that and it's worth noting that although i'm talking about this stuff in terms of houses a lot of the time that's just a general term meaning whatever i want to build here like they don't all have to be residences they can be things like blacksmiths and shops and you know market stalls and that kind of stuff there can be stuff like that all over the place that i just haven't decided exactly what i want to go for yet all i just go i, I just think house civic building of some kind and then just leave the rest of my imagination whenever it comes to building the thing in that particular area. But hopefully this has been enough of an example that you can kind of get the idea of my thought process when it comes to planning out this city build. And this is probably going to be one of the largest things I've ever built, so it's going to be very ambitious, I think. And I'm looking forward to building even more of it once we've got the foundations in place. So I'm going to actually cut away for right now, just so this episode doesn't end up like an hour long of me just rambling about what I want to build here. And I'll come back when I've done a little bit more work on the lower half of our bird's eye view map, and I'll be able to wrap up the episode telling you guys what we're going to work on next. So I think that's going to be it for this layout session. If we switch over to the bird's eye view, you'll be able to see what I've done. And I haven't really done a huge amount in the bottom half of the map there because there's a lot of other geological features, lots of like wells and stuff, these sort of natural dips in the landscape that I need to fill in. But I think it's going to help to leave some of that space a little bit open for other stuff. Obviously, the bottom left hand side of the map and around the left hand side of that ravine is probably going to be taken up by this castle build that I'm going to plan in a separate video. So make sure you look out for that in future. And yeah, I really like the fact that Old Town gets kind of smaller over there in the top right. And overall, I think this is going to be a really nice layout to work with. It's at least going to provide a little bit of inspiration for where some of these buildings are going to go when we design the rest of the town, which we're going to do. We're probably not going to continue this project like over the next like however many episodes. We are going to break those up with some more interesting stuff, some more kind of technical stuff, some more like challenges, things like respawning the Ender Dragon and stuff like that is going to come up. So I'm sure you guys will enjoy a bit of a mix of videos. I don't want to stick around on building for too long for the folks who would prefer other projects and adventures and fun times. But now I've put together the structure for the city, I've decided it's probably time to give this place a name. And this is the name that I had in my head before I even started this project. I just knew I wanted to build some place with this name and this is what I've decided to call it. This place is gonna be called Founders Forge. And this is going to be the central kind of town of our world. It's going to be the first town ever, hence kind of founders. It's going to be the first town we actually build here. And the forge part kind of comes from the fact that they're bringing all of this molten metal and stuff out of the earth. And they're going to be putting that to good use for tools, for energy, that kind of stuff. I hope you guys like that. And I hope you guys will enjoy seeing this city come together over the next weeks and months and however long it takes. This is going to be quite a long and ongoing project. So we're going to break it up with some other stuff, but I'm really looking forward to doing a little bit more building with you guys in this series. So that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.